welcome back to Storytime with Miriam on Monday. Tonight we are going to read a very special book, a brand new book called The Bug Girl, which is a true story uh, about a girl named Sophia Spencer. So here we go, The Bug Girl, a true story by the bug girl herself, Sophia Spencer with Margaret McNamara. Here we go. The first time I made friends with a bug, I was two and a half years old. My mom took me to a butterfly conservatory, which is like a zoo for butterflies. As soon as we got there, a butterfly perched on my shoulder. It flitted onto my hand and my foot, my elbow and my head, even my nose. It stayed with me the whole time we were there. When it was time to go home, a guard stopped us at the door. I'm sorry, miss. The butterfly has to stay here, he told me. Say goodbye to the butterfly, said my mom, but it did not move. Carefully, gently, the guard took the butterfly from my shoulder and after a moment away, it flew. Bye bye butterfly, I said. From that day on, I was bug crazy. Other kids liked storybooks, I liked bug books. Other kids watched videos of cats, I watched bug videos over and over and over. I noticed bugs everywhere I went. And by the time I turned five, I knew a lot about bugs. There are billions of bugs on our planet. Bugs have been on Earth way longer than humans have. They live on every continent, even Antarctica. One way or another, most plants and animals rely on bugs to survive. The scientific names for bugs is anthropods, but I call them bugs for short. In kindergarten, nobody minded that I loved bugs. It's awesome, cool. Whoa, prehistoric dragonflies were as big as seagulls. When the other kids in my class started a karaoke club, I started a bug hunter club. Every weekend, my friends and I took out bug buckets and nets and magnifying glasses out to the stream near my house. We collected fireflies and watched them glow. We identified beetles by their two sets of hidden wings and counted the spots on ladybugs. We watched dragonflies hover like helicopters. We even collected stink bugs, which really can stink. I took the bugs home to study them. Mostly, I had to keep them on the perch so they wouldn't escape and crawl around the house. It's just mom and me at home, so we share chores. Mom has a lot of rules. Make your bed, pick up your clothes, keep your room neat. No ants in the house, unless they're in an ant farm. I just have one rule. All bugs must live. If there's a mosquito buzzing, I snatch it up in a napkin and let it go. We don't have a fly swatter, we have a fly net. One night, my mom saw a water bug, a giant flying roach in the middle of the living room. She knew the bug rule was important to me, so she didn't kill it. She put a net over it and waited for me to find it in the morning. But when I got, but when I lifted up the net, it was gone. When I got to first grade, everything changed. Nobody wanted to hear about bugs. Nobody thought bug facts were cool. At first, I didn't mind. So this kid's saying, bug scientists are called entomologists. Show off, why are you wearing that? Then I brought a grasshopper to school. I thought the kids would be amazed by the grasshopper and that they'd want to know all about it, but they didn't. A bunch of kids crowded around and made fun of me. Sophia's being weird again, one of them said. Ew, gross, said another. Get rid of it. And then they knocked that beautiful grasshopper off my shoulder and stomped on it till it was dead. That night I went home and I cried and I cried. Those kids are wrong, my mom said. It's okay to love bugs, Sophia. I know, I said. It just doesn't feel like it. I had to go back to school, but I didn't bring a bug with me ever again. That didn't stop kids from making fun of me. And these kids are saying, she's so strange. Why doesn't she like regular things? I don't want to be friends with a bug lover. About halfway through first grade, I took a break from bugs. My mom did not like seeing me so unhappy, not one bit. She knew I needed to find other people who loved bugs as much as I did. She wrote an email to a group of entomologists asking for one of them to be my bug pal. 
She wanted me to hear from an expert that it was not weird or strange to love bugs and insects. Maybe somebody will write back, said my mom. Maybe, I said, or at least call. We thought those scientists would be too busy to respond. But three days later, my mom got an email. She opened it. It's from a bug scientist named Morgan Jackson, she said. He wants to put my letter online so that other entomologists can read about you, okay? Okay, I said. Morgan Jackson posted my mom's letter and he asked other bug scientists all around the world to let me know if they had any advice for a girl who loves bugs. Two days after that, messages and posts and videos poured in. I couldn't believe how many people around the world loved bugs as much as I did and how many of them were grown up women. Some were scientists who wrote about the work they do in their labs. Others shared videos of themselves with bugs on their arms and sent pictures of themselves hunting bugs in the wild. I looked at those messages day after day. All these people love bugs, I said to my mom. They do, she said, and they're not weird. Nope, said my mom. They're curious, just like you. Newspapers reporters read my story online and they started calling my mom to find out more. The reporters asked to interview me and I talked to them on the phone. My mom and I even appeared on television, which was a bit scary. It's hard to be on television when you're just an ordinary person, but I did it. I wanted to get the word out that it's okay to love bugs. Then Morgan Jackson decided to write a scientific article about how entomologists can get young people excited about science. Morgan asked if I would like to help write the article. I said yes. School got a lot easier after that because I didn't feel so alone. And nowadays, I like even more things. Gymnastics, time travel books, swimming, and technology. But not too long ago, when somebody asked me to describe myself in three words, I said, the bug girl. That's because I'm happiest when it's just me, a few green leaves, some drops of water, and a bug to keep me company. And then at the back of this book, a really cool part of the book is that there's more bug facts. So she's writing all these different interesting things that she wants you to know about bugs, and then her top four favorite bugs, and she explains why, and then the life cycle of the butter, butterfly, and how to study bugs in the wild. So I hope you enjoyed this book tonight. Have a great sleep and I'll see you tomorrow for French story time with Miriam. Have a great sleep everyone, bye.